G'day guys, it's Paul from Polyman Astro and welcome to another 5 Minute Friday. Today we're going to be looking at the Blink process. I'm surprised I haven't done a video on Blink before because it's such a powerful tool. But today I want to take you through a real case scenario of mine where I had to use it as a diagnostic tool uh, to determine what was going on with my equipment. So the backstory is I've had my gear stored away for about two years or so because of crappy weather and I got it out recently and discovered that it wasn't running as well as it was before I put it away. So there were basically three things I figured were probably wrong with it. Either the mount was damaged, which I thought was hopefully unlikely because it's been in a Pelican case for two years and hasn't moved. There's some sort of guiding issue, um, maybe flexure, uh, the guide scope's moving relative to the main telescope. Or because my camera's been stored away for two years, uh, the fan's got something in it and it's vibrating. Uh, so Blink was going to be a really powerful tool for determining which of those were the issue. So when I used Blink to chronologically travel through my images uh, from the first two nights of three nights of fantastic imaging on the Lagoon Nebula, I noticed that there was a slight movement diagonally of the frame as the night went on. So to me, that was a telltale sign that it was probably flexure. And since I have an OAG, on the third night, I pulled off the guide scope, put on the OAG, and as we're going to see when we work with Blink, we're going to see that that diagonal motion is gone. It's just bouncing around a little bit, and that's just dithering. And the stars will be nice and round, which is fantastic. So it was a very powerful diagnostic tool to discover that, in fact, it was thankfully flexure and not damage to the mount. And in fact, when I looked at the Losman D plate on the top of my rig, that I put the guide scope on. One of the bolts was slightly loose, so hopefully that's fixed it. And on another clear night, I can test my guide scope again, which gives me a bit more back focus uh, to work with. So we can find Blink up here in process or processes. Blink. Uh, and this is what it looks like. It's fairly blank at the moment. This section here is where all our files are going to appear. Uh, and these buttons here are how we're going to navigate them. We can either navigate one frame forward, one frame backwards, or we can play through them at a certain speed that we can select here. Um, I very rarely use the play button, I just use the forwards and backwards buttons. The other thing that's going to happen when I open them is it's going to open them all into memory or swap, depending on how much memory you have, um, and it's going to apply an STF based on the first image in the list. You may want to apply an STF to each image individually, and that's where these buttons are going to come in. Um, so you'll notice that at the moment, the only thing that's available to click is this folder button, because I need to select all my images. Um, I'm in the correct folder, otherwise you've got to navigate to it. I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to open them. And you can see it said it was opening them up into memory, uh, and it's applying an STF to each and every image. Now, how fast this happens is going to depend on the speed of your processor, um, the speed of your hard drive, uh, how many frames you've got. And as I said, it's putting them into memory or possibly swap, and that's going to be important at the end. All right, so here's all our images. It's applied the STF, so I can click through them one frame at a time. I can go back if I was going through too quick and suddenly noticed there was an issue. So when I first ran through uh, my, my nights where I had the guider on, as I was clicking through here, and you can notice this section's chronological. Uh, it's not always chronological. Um, you can see there's, there's some frames out of order down here, unfortunately. But if you find a section that is nicely chronological, then as I was clicking through the, the night where I was having issues, I could see that the frame was moving consistently diagonally up. It wasn't moving by much, but it was moving diagonally up. So there was clearly a, some sort of tracking issue, uh, and, and some of the stars were, were eggy um, in that direction. So... I figured it was probably flexure since it was that nice consistent motion. And then this night when I've put the OAG on and I can go through these chronologically, I can see there is no left, uh, no diagonal motion. There is motion, but that's just dithering. Um, and the stars are all nicely round. So I could see via blink very quickly that I fixed the issue and the issue was flexure. However, when I'm working with blink, another thing that I want to do is make sure I weed out any dodgy frames before I send them away to batch pre-processing. Saves me CPU time, um, and it potentially saves me issues with star alignment if I send any particularly dodgy frames to it. It's pretty good at recognizing dodgy frames and rejecting them, but I find 
it takes so little time to just go through and visually inspect them here. I may as well do that. And in fact, this very first frame you can see is dodgy. If I go to the next frame, yes, it's rotated, but you can see the stars are out of focus. So what happened was because I took the camera off and put the OAG on, when I put it back uh, and it plate solved, it was uh, rotated relative to the previous night. So I had to uh, use the rotator on my um, on my telescope to rotate the system, but I must have accidentally knocked it enough to, to knock it out of focus. Um, so this frame was out of focus um, and I want to get rid of it. And there's two buttons I can do that uh, down here in this list. This first button here with a little X on it, that will close that file in Blink and get rid of it from memory, but it's still in the folder structure. So if you sent them to Way to Batch Preprocessing, it'll still go to it. The other button that we need to use in conjunction is this button here. You can see it's got a file, an arrow, and a folder. And what that's saying is it's going to move that file to a new folder of your choice. So these in conjunction are going to work nicely together. So if I click on that, then I can put the files in the same folder I'm in at the moment, or I can create a new one. And I tend to give it a really detailed name so I know what the folder's for. And you can see it did something there. It, it moved that file. But again, it's still in Blink. So then I can close that file. And now it's not in Blink anymore. And I can go through my, my frames. And in fact, if I go through here to the very last frames in this imaging run, um, which was about 4.30 or 5 in the morning at this point, and then I work through these frames, you'll see, can you see that it suddenly went dark on the right-hand side there? And in fact, the next frame's pretty well entirely blank. And these are just hot pixels here. What's happened is it's got so low on the horizon that it's actually imaging my fence. So that's the first spot where the fence appears and then it's it's mostly fence at this point. So I clearly don't want to send these two frames to a way to batch pre-processing because it's probably going to get confused potentially depending on settings and think these are stars and the alignment's going to get screwed up. So I'm going to move those and it remembers the folder so you don't have to to rechoose the folder every time and then close them out of blink just so I can double check at the end with maybe a quick playthrough that there's no dodgy frames. Okay and once you've gone through and you can play through your images to to check that they really are okay you can see there was a plane that ran through at one point but that's all right um, the rejection algorithms will catch that one. Um, once you confirm that they're all good and that's what you want what you want to do is click on this button which closes all the images because at the moment they're still in memory and, or, or in the swap and if you just close blink you haven't actually killed them out of memory and, and swap um, which is using resources you don't want so let's close them all gets rid of them out of memory now we can close blink so there we go that's how i use blink as a diagnostic tool I haven't gone through every single button on it but hopefully you can see how powerful a tool it is uh, as a diagnostic tool and also to make sure that you prep things ready for way to batch pre-processing so you don't potentially have some issues with star alignment and registration later on. Thanks for watching.